Paul79 here. I hope you're safe and well. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just laughing about it. It's actually quite cringy, that intro, isn't it? Anyway, <laughs> welcome back. Welcome to part 10 of my uh, home EV build where I'm hoping to electrify a Porsche Boxster and also make it look like a GT3 RS. On this episode, uh, what I thought I would go through is um, the um, mounting of the Tesla large drive unit into the specialised uh, subframe that I've had made uh, by the good guys at Drift Moto. I'll put a link to their website in the description. The reason why I'm doing this, I know it's a specially designed sort of frame and kit, especially for the LDU, but there is, I have worked out through many hours and many swear words, probably the best way to actually get it all together. So so what I didn't want to do is forget about it because it's almost ready to go in the car and uh, also potentially help other people um, because, you know, it's a fantastic piece of kit. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased I've gone down this route with using it. So let's crack on and see uh, how, uh, how to do it. See you in a bit. Bye. So here I have um, my Drift Moto subframe with a Tesla large drive unit on and two battery boxes. The subframe and the battery boxes are a special kit that comes from Drift Moto. Um, you obviously have to do all the drilling of the holes, etc., etc. But the actual subframe, I'm going to talk through how and my experience of how to actually get it all fitted. But before I begin, um, a couple of things to point out that basically these pieces, these are part of the original Boxster. I've painted them black, but you, you will use these off your original car. You'll see on the past photos I've put on them and past videos of the actual um, subframe kit. It involves this uh, metal piece, this sort of frame bit. Um, it's hard to see, but... Then you've got these two sort of brace bars that go across here. That's what the boxes sit on. You have this mount that mounts to the front um, and it mounts using the original engine mount holes. Um, and then you can't really see it, but the back of the Tesla motor mounts on another bracket here. Let me put the light on. There you go. You see those two bolts. There is a bracket there and then the LDU one of the mounts mounts to that then I've got another bracket on the top there that's just to support the weight of the boxes because basically we have three batteries in here three Tesla modules so that's 75 kilos and then another four in here so that's another 100 kilos so that just helps um, support the weight of those um, so on to the fitting of the actual or the process so I found, so initially I tried to sort of fit this frame, not with all the stuff on, but certainly try and test fit it with these, let's call these the um, the H pieces. These are sort of like mounts. Uh, are, uh, it's basically where the suspension arms go or part of the suspension setup connects to. Right, I tried to basically raise all of this up with these still on the car, right? Now the problem with that is when you've got the boxes uh, in their highest position here, you have to jack the car up really high. And with my ramp, I had a problem because my ramp's quite wide. So the boxes actually fit just between those ramps. You can see I've put some carpet on there to stop them getting scratched now. But I've also, had, because of my ramp, I've had to put my car on axle stand so I've got more clearance because I have the connectors on the outside of the box. And they need to go on the sides of the box, really. Um, both the connectors and the, uh, the coolant side of things. You know, you can see on my boxes, I've tried to do it at the front to start with. It doesn't work because there's just not enough room. Um, I tried to do it at the front because of my ramp problem, but yeah, really, you don't want to have a ramp like that. You want to have one that's got arms either side, so you have more clearance to get the, the thing in. So I initially tried to get all of this in the car without actually securing the, 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 the Tesla motor 
to the subframe. Well, I had it secured at the at the uh, the mounting uh, point there, but this and the side mount, um, I hadn't had it connected. Now the problem with that is, is once it's in the car, it's very difficult to sort of maneuver the um, Tesla unit because it's just simply too heavy. And it actually floats, right? It doesn't actually touch any of the subframe, whether it be the box to, box to pieces or the drift moto setup. It has to basically float there. And that's what it's designed for. And the best way I found to do it is connect your LDU to the rear, have it sitting down on the subframe outside of the car. And then what you want to do is get the side mount on because then that will help stabilize it and lift it up on its own. Now, the best way to do it is to have all of this here, have these pieces off. So all you've got is the lower frame showing. Then put this piece on, have the Tesla um, uh, motor suspended in the air with a crane. And this is the other thing, and I think I've mentioned this before, you definitely need a balancer, right? It helps because, you know, to lift the motor up, I've just got two straps here, you can see that. But this side of the motor is much heavier than this side, because this is the actual motor that dr that turns the, the wheels, whereas that is the electronic side, that's the inverter. So, the side mount is mounted on the heavier side. Having that balancer is great because it enables me to lift this side up more than that side because that's the heaviest. And the idea is, is yeah, you lift it up, you attach the side mount. Now let's go through the side mount. It's a very, very clever piece of kit. So you've got a bush here. It, it mounts to four pieces, uh, sorry, four bolt holes. It's spaced out. And then you have this metal bracket. This is all in the kit and it's designed to fit into this original Boxster piece here. So you can see what's happened. I've got a bolt going through here with a big with a lovely spacer. That's a very pretty spacer. And then you've got a bolt in there. And you can't get a spanner in there. You don't need to. It can still turn. So you just want to wedge a screwdriver in there to stop it turning and tighten it up from this side. Likewise on the bottom bit here same thing bolt nut there that's a nylock lock i not i managed to get that in so you can see there it doesn't you can't get a spanner in but you don't need to just wedge a screwdriver in there stop it turning <clears throat> here you've got the bush so here you've got the bush um turn the light off oh flashing it's probably better with it on isn't it so here you've got the bush here with a bolt have it so the, the nut or the top of the bolt is this side and then it can come through here so you've got space because you don't have a lot of space there because it butts up right against, it doesn't touch but it's very close to the original box to mount there. So that's all in there placed there then so you'd have basically that connected to this and the, the Tesla mount remote there, the bolt sorry. So at this point now, you don't have any of this in place, right? This is just free, it's not mounted there, and this isn't even on here. The next thing you need to worry about is this side. Now, this kit was designed for a 986 Boxster. My, I'm using a 987, and they do actually, these, these support mounts, these supports are actually different between the two models, between the 987 and the 986. Not a lot different, but they're sort of, you can see here, these mounting points from the original car a bit more angular right they're not so angular on the um on the 986 long story short what i'm trying to get at and also because my motor is mounted upside down it's not mounted back to front and as i've said in the past the reason why it's mounted upside down is so I can use my T2C control unit because that has to have that'll only work if the Tesla motor is mounted the way in theory the Tesla it came out of the Tesla. I.e., what I'm trying to say is, if I want to go forward, the Tesla will be going forward like it would originally, 
whereas the original Drift Moto kit was designed for it to be mounted backwards and when the car in your EV build is going forwards, the actual Tesla motor is in reverse, okay? So what they've had to do, especially for me, because I'm awkward, is had to redesign this mounting kit so that this part here is over this side, because previously it was the other way around, so this bush was more this side, and the same for the bracket there. So I've just got two new pieces. Well, I'll have three because I'll have a new sort of support plate there as well. But long story short, you want to check that the Tesla motor doesn't hit this box to support mount. And I've actually had to grind it away. Probably because two things, the, uh, the motor is mounted upside down as opposed to back to front. And also because it was designed for a 986 Boxster and this is a 987 and this, this, this support mount is different. So I've had to grind that away, not too much. Um, it took a while because you sort of have to test fit it, grind a bit more, test fit it, and there is no point. You have to put all of this on to check clearance because there is no point just putting this piece in place without putting this on and having this hanging here because the Tesla motor comes up. Yeah, so you sort of have to construct it, take it apart, test, grind a bit more away, construct it again, test. So at the moment, now, this Tesla motor is fully supported by the subframe. I know I've got the crane here, but you know, there's no tension on there. And that is just sort of floating as it was intended. So now this is ready to go in for the first time properly. So just to reiterate, it mounts here on the original engine mounts. See where those two pipes at the bottom are poking out? Just there. And it will be bolted to the car where those support mounts were. So if you look here, you can see the scratch paint. So there's a hole there and a hole there. Right, so that thing, you just lift it up. So I'm gonna do it for the first time properly. Wish me luck. I hope it works. See, look, there's one of the bolts that sticks down. So that will go through this hole here and lift it up and bolt it up. And hopefully everything will be good. Wish me luck. As you can see from all that to and fro here, I didn't actually manage to get, get her in properly um, because I ran out of time and I think I need to do a couple of other adjustments on um, the, uh, the engine bay area. Um, but anyway, I've done them. And what I've done is basically I've created a little bit more room for the boxes. Um, but anyway, that, that can be for another episode. <laughs> but I'm gonna try again tomorrow night and hopefully third time or fourth time lucky fingers crossed um, I can get her bolted up but anyway thanks for watching guys I hope that's been help on the whole sort of subframe LDU type of thing anyway till next time see you later bye bye